In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with the Spirit. Let us pray. God, our Father, you have established a universal call to holiness for all people, and the work of your hands is manifest in the lives of the men and women of every age who serve you. You call us to recognize in the lives of our fellow Christians the inner workings of your grace. Today, we ask that you would grant us the gifts of counsel, knowledge, and holy wisdom as we receive petitions on behalf of the faithful who seek the opening of causes of canonization. Grant that in our search for the truth, we may find peace in your holy will. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, I am pleased to welcome all of you here today in the context of prayer and praise to Almighty God. I welcome members of the supporters and groups representing three members of the faithful of the Diocese of Lafayette, Charlene Marie Richard, Auguste Nonco Pelafigue, and Father Joseph Verbus Lafleur. Today, present with us are not only those who are devoutly petitioning for the formal opening of the causes of beatification and canonization, but also members of their families and individuals who knew these candidates when they lived and served here in our diocese. I'm also pleased to welcome Father Luis Escalante, canon lawyer who lives in Italy and who has agreed to serve as postulator for the causes of two of our candidates. Also present today are individuals, clergy, and laypersons who will serve as officials in the various canonical positions that are necessary according to the law of the Church for the investigation of these causes and who will help to ensure that the investigations into the lives of these candidates will seek only the truth and be faithful to the law of the Church. We're grateful also for the presence of members of the press who are helping us to inform our community about this joyful day. And finally, I welcome all of you who are watching our ceremony via live streaming. I would now ask that we are as that we be attentive to the reading from the Holy Word of God and the section of the Second Vatican Council. The first reading is taken from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, See what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Chapter 5 of Dogmatic Constitution on the Church of the Second Vatican Council. Thus it is evident to everyone that all the faithful of Christ, of whatever rank or status, are called to the fullness of the Christian life and to the perfection of charity. 
By this holiness, as such a more human manner of living is promoted in this earthly society. In order that the faithful may reach this perfection, they must use their strength accordingly as they have received it, as a gift from Christ. They must follow in his footsteps and conform themselves to his image, seeking the will of the Father in all things. They must devote themselves with all their being to the glory of God and the service of their neighbor. In this way, the holiness of the people of God will grow into an abundant harvest of good as it is admirably shown by the life of so many saints in church history. The classes and duties of life are many, but holiness is one, that sanctity which is cultivated by all who are moved by the Spirit of God and who obey the voice of the Father and worship God the Father in spirit and in truth. These people follow the poor Christ, the humble and cross-bearing Christ, in order to be worthy of being sharers in his glory. Every person must walk unhesitatingly <laughs> according to his own personal gifts and duties in the path of living faith, which arouses hope and works through charity. Here ends the reading. Would the representatives of the groups of the faithful who request the opening of causes of beatification and canonization of candidates please come forward to present your petitions to the bishop. I first of all invite Mrs. Bonnie Broussard, a representative of the Friends of Charlene. Your Excellency, Bishop Desitel. Charlene Richard was an ordinary young person from the small community of Richard, about 30 miles from Lafayette. She was a Roman Catholic Cajun girl born on January 13, 1947. She loved basketball and her family. She was inspired by the life of St. Therese of Lisieux. As a middle schooler, she faced a terminal diagnosis of leukemia with faith beyond the abilities of most adults and determined not to waste the sufferings she would face. She joined herself to Jesus on his cross and offered her intense pain and suffering for others. In the two-week walk with her at the end of her life, she inspired Father Joseph Brennan, the priest who ministered to her. She asked him daily from her deathbed, Okay, Father, who am I to offer my sufferings for today? She died on August the 11th, 1959, and is buried in Reshore, Louisiana. After her death, devotion spread quickly. Many testimonials have been given by people who have benefited by prayer to Charlene. Thousands of people travel each year to visit her grave. On the 30th anniversary of her death, over 4,000 people attended the outdoor mass celebrated by then Bishop Harry Flynn and was widely covered by television and newspapers throughout the United States. Since then, her story has spread internationally. Along with help in illness, others prayed for help with marital problems, help with finding jobs, and good weather to save their crops. A prayer cloth ministry has distributed over 200,000 prayer cloths 
to individuals in the United States and abroad. These prayer cloths are also included in Charlene Christmas boxes distributed through nonprofit charities throughout Louisiana and Texas. The Charlene Reshore Admission House has been built in Northeast Thailand and houses visiting missionaries who cares for children who are often not much older than Charlene when she died. Bishop Desitel, on behalf of the Friends of Charlene Reshore, we respectfully request, according to the norms of canon law, that you accept this, our petition, to formally open the cause for canonization and beatification of Charlene Marie Richard for the glory of God and the good of the church. Thank you. Thank you. I now invite forward Father Mark Ledoux, a representative of the friends of Father Joseph Verbus Lafleur. <clears throat> Your Excellency Bishop Desitel, Father Joseph Verbus Lafleur lived an extraordinary life in just 32 years. He was born on January the 24th of 1912 in Ville Platte, Louisiana, from very humble beginnings. Like so many today, he came from a broken home, but this did not hamper him from fulfilling his dream to become a priest. His summons, summers while at Notre Dame Seminary in New Orleans, Louisiana, were spent teaching catechism and first communicants the Catholic faith. Ordained a priest on April the 2nd, 1938, in the wake of the Second World War, he asked the bishop to become a military chaplain and was denied. However, after his second request, the bishop gave in to his request. As a chaplain, he displayed heroism beyond the call of duty earning the Distinguished Service Cross, the second highest honor for valor. However, it was as a Japanese prisoner of war that Father Lafleur would reveal the intensity of his love, which would demonstrate the holiness of this man of God. Though kicked, slapped, and beaten by his captors, he always sought to better the conditions of his fellow prisoners of war. He even let pass opportunities for his escape in order to remain where he knew his men needed him. Ultimately, he ended up on a Japanese prisoner of war ship, which mistakenly came under American friendly fire. He calmly led the men in prayer as an American submarine torpedoed their unmarked ship. He was last seen on September the 7th, 1944, helping men out of the hole of the sinking ship for which he posthumously earned a purple heart, a bronze star, and in October of 2017, for his actions as a prisoner of war, Father Lafleur was awarded a second Distinguished Service Cross. In order to open the cause for beatification and canonization for Father Lafleur, we, the friends of Father Joseph Verbis Lafleur, recognize that the permission of two other bishops related to his place of death and his military service are required. However, today, we humbly ask you to publicly state your intention to open his cause for beatification and canonization as soon as these permissions are obtained. Thank you, Father. Yeah. I invite forward Mr. Charles Hardy, a representative of the, of the Auguste Nonco Pelafigue Foundation.
<coughs> Your Excellency Bishop Desertel, Mr. Auguste Nonco Pilafig, a layman, was born January 10th, 1888 in France, near Lourdes. His family immigrated to the United States and settled in French-speaking Louisiana in the town of Orneville. In keeping with French custom, as, a, as Auguste grew older, he was given the nickname Nonco, meaning uncle, for he indeed came to be considered like a good uncle to everyone who came into his ambit of influence. He graduated from the Louisiana State Normal School in Natchitoches, Louisiana, where he studied to become a teacher. It was during that time he became a member of the Apostleship of Prayer, League of the Sacred Heart, an organization first founded in France in 1844 for the purpose of devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and praying for the intentions of the Pope. He taught in public schools at Crot Springs, at Coteau d'Odin, which is a little rural area in St. Martin Parish, just a few miles from Orneville. In 1949, as the only layman, he joined the faculty of Orneville's newly built Little Flower School. <clears throat> Noko was known for his passionate devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Blessed Virgin Mary. He devoutly attended daily Mass and served wherever he was needed. Perhaps most inspiringly, with rosary looped around his arm, Nonco traversed the highways and byways of his community, spreading devotion <coughs> to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. On weekends, he taught religion to public school children. He also organized the League of the Sacred Heart with some 1,200 members and 100 promoters who helped distribute leaflets monthly in their communities. He, too, would travel the country roads of Orneville and the neighboring communities on foot to visit the sick and the grieving. Many people who recall seeing him on this errand are said to have offered him a ride, but even in the poorest of weather conditions, he always declined, saying that it was his way of doing penance for conversions and for the poor souls in purgatory. He was truly a door-to-door -door evangelist. There was also a creative aspect to Nicole's life. Each summer and during the Christmas and Lenten seasons, he ingeniously introduced devotion to the Sacred Heart, the stories of the Bible and the lives of the saints through dramatic performances. He personally wrote and directed these plays, which captured the attendance of the audience and the performers. By the use of drama, he shared a passionate love of Christ with his students and the entire community. In this way, he opened not only the minds, but the hearts of his students. He was referred to by his pastor as another priest in his parish. <clears throat> Through the efforts of Father Daniel Bernard, pastor in Orneville, and Bishop Jules Jamard, first bishop of the Diocese of Lafayette, Pope Pius XII awarded Noco with the Pro Ecclesia et Pontifice Medal in recognition for his dedicated and humble service to the Catholic Church. <clears throat> this papal decree was given to Noco in 1953. <clears throat> this papal decoration is one of the highest honors awarded to members of the lay faithful. For 24 more years until his death, in 1977, at the age of 89, Nonco continuously spread devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus for a total of 68 years, until the day he died on June 6, 1977, which was the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. <clears throat> Bishop, does it tell? On behalf of the Auguste Nonco Pilafig Foundation, we respectfully request, according to the norms of canon law, that you accept this petition to formally open and investigate the life of Auguste Noko Pilafig in the cause for beatification sainthood. Thank you. Thank you.
I, John Douglas Desitel, Bishop of the Diocese of Lafayette, having received the petitions of the faithful of my diocese on behalf of Charlene Marie Richard and Auguste Nonco Pelafigue, do hereby, according to the norm of canon law, formally open the causes for the canonization of these two lay persons. I further state my intention regarding Father Joseph Verbus Lafleur, having received the proper consultation of my brother bishops and the competence of the Congregation for the Causes of Saints, to likewise open his cause for canonization according to the norms of the law of the Church. May the Holy Spirit guide us in the days ahead so that all may be accomplished for the glory of God and the good of the Church. Amen. <laughs> Bishop Desitel will now sign the canonical decrees formally opening the causes for canonization, which will begin the process for inquiry into the lives of these two members of the faithful. He will also today appoint officials in various roles required by canon law to assist him in discovering the truth about the lives and the virtues of the individuals who may now be called servants of God. Assisting Bishop Desitel in the signing of these documents is our Chancellor, Mrs. Maureen Fontenot, who will witness the bishop's signature and place upon it the seal of the Diocese of Lafayette. The completion of any cause of canonization requires the assistance of many individuals. <clears throat> I now ask that all of the officials who are present today 
to please come and stand before the altar of God in order that you may now take your oath of office before the bishop. Once the bishop has administered the oath, please signify your agreement by answering, I do. And so I ask all of you, do you, the officials in the causes for canonization which we have today opened, promise before God and under oath that you shall faithfully and to the best of your ability acknowledge and consciously fill, fulfill your office in accordance with canon law for the glory of God and the good of the church? Please signify your agreement by answering, I do. I do. I thank you for your willing service. May the Lord prosper the work of your hands. I now ask all in the congregation to please stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in the darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.
thank you to all of you for being here for the opening of the causes up for canonization this morning.